Hey guys, don't forget to uh, check out my book uh, by the same name as the podcast, The Gospel of Fire. It is on Amazon. Um, So just go on amazon.com, The Gospel of Fire, or you can just simply search my name as well, Elliot Marshall, and it will pop up. You can buy the Kindle version or the paperback version. I appreciate the support. And it just kind of goes up in about my life a little bit as a, as a, a memoir-ish to self-help-ish type book. But uh, check it out. Leave a review if you so choose and you find it helpful or unhelpful either way. So Amazon.com back and then search The Gospel of Fire. Guys, the podcast is also brought to you by Onnit, O-N-N-I-T. T human optimization company. Again, code word Elliot is the code word for your order on Onnit. You will receive 10% off. Again, O N N I T, all kinds of stuff for human optimization. They have supplements. Um, man, they have the total human. They have all kinds of stuff. Alpha Brain, I love me some Alpha Brain every once in a while when I know I got to sit down, get some work done. The brain just kicks in a little bit. I've, uh, I've enjoyed using the Shroom Tech Sport. It gives that little extra boost when I'm, when I'm getting ready to go do a workout. So again, O N N I T, code word Elliot, and you will receive 10% off your order. Guys, this podcast is being brought to you by Evo Labs. Evo Labs is a cannabis company who uh, has some of the best CBD products on the market. I really enjoy all uh, their CBD products. They have an intense salve that is my favorite product, where um, deals with muscle soreness. You rub it uh, on your muscles. You rub it, you know, rub it on your body after a shower, and uh, man, really helps relieve the soreness. There, other CBD products, um, all kinds of different ones um, that you can intake or use some for sleeping, some for stress and anxiety. Anyway, evolabs.com. Go check them out and you type in the code word fire and you will receive 10% off your order. Evolabs.com. Ever have sore, beat up fingers after jujitsu? We all have, right? Ever wish there was a better way to ice them down than sticking your fingers in a cup of ice water? Well, Now there is Penguin Fingers, invented by a jiu-jitsu black belt. Penguin Fingers remove the soreness from your fingers or your toes in just minutes, allowing you to train harder and longer with less damage to your digits. Chronic inflammation is like sand in your joints. Training day, day in and day out with sore, irritated fingers can leave them arthritic and knobby. Penguin Fingers can stop all of that before it ever starts. Penguin Fingers, non-toxic, reusable, individual finger ice packs come in boxes of one, two, or four soft gel sleeves. Simply keep them in your freezer and roll them out onto sore fingers or toes as they are needed. Available on Amazon or at penguinfingers.com. Fingers are life tools. Protect them. Use code 10 the fire. And you will receive 10% off at checkout. Again, one zero, the fire for 10% off at checkout at penguinfingers.com. Hey guys, this is former UFC fighter Elliot Marshall, and this is the Gospel of Fire but we're going to go through the fire to learn how to live the best life possible. So guys, I'm trying to, uh, I'm doing a little intro to uh, all of my podcasts now. So uh, uh, bear with me. Uh, this week on the podcast, I have a Draculino who is uh, an OOG of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in, in Brazil, who really has been a creator of champions for a very, very long time. If you if you look back, he was creating champions um, back in the early 2000s, you know, early 2000s, late 90s, and he still is today with, with all this game 
change and, and all this new stuff and, and jiu-jitsu moving to the internet generation, he's still been able to, but he has still been able to stay very relevant and, and create champions. And um, what we get into is uh, a little more than just about creating the champion, about what, what Brazilian jiu-jitsu really does for the person and where it's moving today. So um, I hope you guys enjoy uh, this episode of The Gospel of Fire with uh, Professor Draculino. All right, guys, here we are, another episode of The Gospel of Fire. And, I'm, man, I've been super lucky lately. I have had uh, a lot of legends, a lot of, a lot of uh, game changers in the Brazilian jiu-jitsu world that I've been able to talk to. And today I have, uh, man, maybe, maybe one of the people who um, has, I would say, created one of the greatest teams in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and continues to do so, uh, Draculino. How are you, Draculino? Doing great, brother. How are you? Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. I, uh, I know it's going to be great. Thank uh, th- you. Thanks for doing it with me, man. Uh, you know, uh, I don't even remember the first time I met you. I think it was at uh, Pan Americans in in Florida when the when the Pans used to be in Florida. And um, yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Either that time, Elliot, or when I taught the seminar a long time ago. <sighs> Uh, for you guys uh, in Boulder, yes, uh, this was like in two thousand or nineteen ninety nine or something. Yeah, that, I think that uh, is because I think of, I it, yes, I knew you at the pans. I said hello to you. Yes, you're yeah. right. You came up and, with uh, Alberto. You're already super tough, <laughs> and, and um, I was already super proud of you, saying like, "Man, this kid is amazing." <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there, uh, uh, yeah. So it was when we had the small little school in Boulder. I mean, I couldn't. I think I was a blue belt, probably. You know, I just probably I, so. I, I just gotten my blue belt. Um, I think Amal and Alberto were either. I think probably still br- uh, purples. I think there were still purple belts at the time. I think Amal, if I'm not mistaken, was brown. Okay, either brown or purple, and Albert was brown. Albert was brown. Okay, uh, but I'm not sure like who got first. You know. Sure. Sure. So man, you you came up. Uh, I mean, you came up with with like ev- like in the in a very old school way when jujitsu was still unknown in you know across the world, only known in Brazil. You know when what is what yeah. is your story? I don't I don't know anything about your story. I know that you moved to Belo Horizonte and created monsters. So I was like, yeah. I'm all, when I'm always like, I was like, damn, I really should because I I know I know so little. I I want to I want to hear your story. Yeah. Uh- Man, I was uh, pretty much born. In, I was born in Rio. Okay. Uh, born and raised in Rio, and uh, I started training. Uh, I, I, I used to live in Baja for a long time since I was a kid. And actually, my my grandfather, my grandmother, they were actually living in a building that was one of the first building to be ever built in Baja de Tijuca. Baja was pretty much very, very remote. There was nothing too much going on. And I've been going to Baja for a long time, so it was always kind of my childhood place. And uh, because of surfing, you know, I turned judo when I was really young, but actually surfing took me to jiu-jitsu. And I used to surf in a spot in Rio called Quebra Mar. And Quebra Mar is the place that... Uh, <laughs> That's where Amal lost people. his boat, right? <laughs> when he first came. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Isn't that where he first lost his boat? <laughs> it's right there. It's right there. When he tried to come out of the, out of the channel there, yeah. the channel. Uh, yeah. That's right there. <laughs> Kevin Amar is not is not for amateurs, man. Yeah, Tell Amal, they have to be professional to be there in those waters. It's dangerous stuff. He so he <laughs> lost it. He lost one boat, and then Alberto was coming down, right? Yeah. And, and he made Alberto bring him another boat, like you know. I that. I okay, so exactly any, that. Yeah, so good time. Uh, but anyway, and like uh, from surfing circles, uh, and because I, I was living really close, I got to to, to know. Uh, several Gracie family members, members such as Half, High, and uh, Hanzo, Flavia, and uh, Master Carlinhos was just starting the school there in Baja. He moved from Copacabana to Baja as a brand new neighborhood. So uh, I was pretty much there and seeing everything. Uh, I was more into surfing, uh, but because I surfed with those guys and I used to hang out with the guys. And uh, how old were you at this the, time? The, you know, in the in the Cabra Mar neighborhood. So one thing led to the other and I started to train. It how, was probably, I would say 1985 around that time. So how old were you uh, in 85? I was 14. Okay, so 13, you were, you were a kid still. Was, yeah, yeah, okay, teenager. Yeah. And Haya was 10, Haya was younger than me, me and half the same age and Hans was a little older than us. Hans was probably like 17, so, okay. 17, 18. 
So, uh, yeah, and then I, we started, I actually started my first lessons with Pitoko. Pitoko is a, is a great guy who's a, a six degree black belt nowadays. And he was also one of the surfers from Kairamar, one of, one of Hanzo's best friends. And uh, I couldn't afford Gracie Barra back in the time because uh, he was uh, very, very high price. I remember that. It was kind of more elite uh, school back in the in the early 80s. Okay. And then, like, uh, I got a hookup. Half hooked me up with, like, a good deal, a good price. And then I started training Gracie Barra. And here I am to today. <laughs> I think there's a big gap <laughs> in between there and here. <laughs> well, the TB, the the Belarus don't you think? I mean, I train, I I train in Gracie Baja like every single day from uh, from yeah, you know, 1984 and 1985 ish until 1995 when I actually moved to Belarus don't you, to start the first Gracie Baja official school. Outside of Rio, so is that why you uh, moved to Belo Horizonte? To, is to is to start a, like that was the purpose yes, of moving? Yes, a lot of people think I'm from Belo Horizonte, but no, I moved to Belo Horizonte in 1995. Okay, I was already 24 years old. Uh, I was born and raised in Rio, and I learned uh, and I got all my belts in Gracie Baja with uh, the Machado brothers and uh, Mestre Carlinhos. I got my brown, my black with Mestre Carlinhos, and my blue and my purple with uh, the Machado brothers. Okay. But uh, because they used to teach at Gracie Baja back in the day. Right. That, you know? Right. Yeah. So uh, and then uh, after I got my black belt in the beginning of 1995, uh, I was also graduating in law in the law school. And I was kind of debating what to do in my life. You know, like Rio was a tough market. I was already teaching class in Rio at Gracie Ipanema. Gracie Ipanema actually was a place that Amal used to go a lot. Mm -hmm. okay. I remember that. Uh, I used to be one of the instructors. The main instructors were... were was Hanzo Gracie, the owner of the school was Master Carlinhos, and I was one of the assistant instructors. It was at the at a certain point, me, Gordo, uh, and Marcelo Yogi. Marcelo Yogi was also uh, there for, for, for a minute. And uh, and then I decided to try in Belo Horizonte. It was a, the third biggest city, still is the third biggest city in Brazil. Uh, nice city and uh, a city that has all the family, all my wife's families from there. So I had a little support in the beginning to start everything. Were you from married? Zero. Were, were you married right then? Like when you yes, were, okay, yes. so you, okay. I was married. Like my daughter was born. Jade was born in 1994. I was I wasn't even a black belt yet. She was born in June 1994. Okay. And uh, I was already married. And then uh, I moved first just by myself. My wife was still finishing school in Rio. And uh, after my second son Igor was born in 1996. Then we all moved for good. I was going like back and forth to Rio and Belo a lot during that time. It was very tough. But uh, but yeah, and then uh, Belo was born with that, exactly. It was a, a project that uh, Besser Carlinhos and me went before there to try to find a place, to try to get the right connections and do that. And, and man, it was the best decision I made professionally in my life. Look uh, what was built. You yeah, know, you, some of the yeah. biggest champions in Jiu-Jitsu history and one of the biggest teams ever. So, you know, it was the right decision. It was really interesting was, seeing, like, even this year at the Worlds, like, uh, you, like, there was five people from your lineage in, yeah. in the finals. Yeah. Like, you didn't, uh, yeah. like, I know, uh, so when, I, when I'm calling your lineage, is either direct you, you know, or, mm -hmm. or Homolo. Yeah. Right? And exactly. Like, that, exactly. Was, that was really, really cool. Like, I don't think anybody yeah. else had that. I don't think anybody else gets, it, you know? And, and in reality, this was on the black belt only, Elliot. But right. in the other belts, we had three other kids that plays too. And uh, they are uh, directly training from my school in Belo Horizonte. My, my school, that, uh, the one that I founded in uh, 1995, is still going strong. I have some of my kids uh, teaching there, Sergio, uh, Sergio and Claudio Cavaquinha. They're still teaching there, and we're still producing monsters. Uh, Lucas Valenti and uh, Andresa Sintra, they train me here in Texas. They they train me every single day and they work for me here in Texas for already, Lucas for already six years, five, six years, and uh, Andresa for two years, you know. So they're my students. Like, I, I'm the one that put the hands on him all the time. Uh, Felipe Preguiça, Felipe Pena, uh, was also a student there. He trains there since he was a little kid. Uh, I taught classes to him until he was a uh, blue belt, and then I moved to the U.S. Uh, and then he stayed with uh, Professor Marcelo Rapuru. Marcelo Rapuru 
was the one that took over after I left to the U.S. Now, Professor Marcel Rapuru is here in Texas as well. Uh, but Felipe Pena still trains uh, daily at our school in Brazil, Gracie Barra BH. Okay. And uh, Gabriel Arges also came from Gracie Barra BH. He's been living with Homolo for quite a while now, but he came from there too. So everybody's from the house, pretty much. There's nobody. Uh, I didn't hire anybody. <laughs> I didn't recruit anybody. And I never did that. Everybody, every champion that we made was produced. It was yours. In-house. I know. That's yes. what's amazing. How So... Uh, this is what I wanted to talk to you about a little bit. I want to get into how you really helped me, um, but we'll get to that later. For um, but right now, um, how how have you done it? Like because like when you look at it, like the game has changed, right? Like I mean, yes. like 100%. Worm Garden, Barambolo, and and, and and all of this stuff, right? Like which yeah. which you, I mean, like I mean, this wasn't even thought of when you were like when you when oh, you were yeah. learning and when you first started teaching, like. Like, Homolo was one of the first really great guys, other than maybe Chinguinha, right? Chinguinha was the great guy, the first great spider spider guard. But Homolo really got really, that really great spider guard, you know? Um, yeah. And multiple-time well, world champion with it. How have you stayed, how have you been able to do this? Uh, I have a funny story in regards to spider guard. <laughs> I was one of the first guys to do spider guard in competition. Back in like uh, late eighties, okay. I swear to God, I, I have like I used to have some footage uh, in a cassette tape of me doing like classical spider guard with the hands on the sleeves in nineteen ninety eight, nineteen ninety nine, around that. I did invent the the spider guard, but I copied from Hanzo. I saw Hanzo doing it at the school, and Hanzo did it like a lot of times, or not all the time. But I was like all about that, and I started to get some some techniques that nobody taught me. It was just happening because of the game that I was doing. It was more a defensive game to not let people pass my guard. And all of a sudden I started to develop that. So spider guard, I'm, I can definitely say for sure, sweater guard that I was one, one of the first OGs. And, and uh, Chi Chi, Homolo, all those guys got that from me because it was one of my specialties. Right. You know, Ching Chia also was younger than me in, in, in Gracie Baja. Okay. And I mean, even though I didn't teach him, uh, he's, I'm not responsible for him to have a great spider guard, but uh, he definitely got inspired by just not just me, but for Hanzo and all these guys because we're all training in the same environment. So, I, and, uh, you know, I would say that ahead. you and Henzo, right? Like, so are, 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 have been able to stay so current. Like, yeah. like there's champions coming out of Bell Horizonte and, and your lineage and there's champions coming out of Henzo's, right? Yes. Like, um, Henzo's may be a little more no ish than, than in the yes. gi, you know, but mm-hmm. still it's what, yeah. uh, it, it's been amazing. Like he's, he has like, like Neiman and Hobson fighting in Bellator, like Neiman fighting for the, the world title. You know, he brought Hodger up who, you know, I mean, Hodger's yeah. half his age. So he's like, the two of you have stayed very, very mm-hmm. current in this uh in this age of innovation in this age of the internet right like that's, that's j- true Jackson, that's, how old are you now i'm 48 about to be 48 i'm 47 about to be 48 about to be 48 so like i mean let's let's be honest right you're not inverting on your neck because you're no, almost 50 years old <laughs> you know like and so i have a really bad neck brother i have yeah. a lot of early you since i was younger so it's, it's not bad neck. <laughs> it's not your game so it's not like what you mastered and now okay no. you're you're showing your but so what what are you doing Jacqueline what what are you Bro, doing to stay with the game first first of all uh this can sound a little cliche but uh, I don't have uh another way to say it Elliot you have to be open-minded all the time whenever you close your mind that's the beginning of the end okay I have a lot of the new things, the new school things that I don't do. Actually, most of it I don't do, but I need to understand how they work. I need to understand uh, the mechanisms of, of, of the techniques in order to teach my students at least to defend it or at least to have a, a, a game to not allow the person to perform that kind of thing on them easily. You know, and the only way to, to do that is by studying. I have to go sit my butt there, watch videos, get my new students to do the things. And they actually teach me all that stuff. You know, Lucas, for example, Lucas Valente, he teaches, teaches me all this stuff. The lapel, the 50-50, the, 
the nuances of the of the reverse de la Riva, the inverted guard, all that stuff. Uh-huh. You know, because I need to be aware of what's coming. If I close my mind uh, and I stop paying attention to this and I just talk shit about that, like for example, oh man, this sucks, man, this is ridiculous, this is not real jujitsu, like some some people do, and you see this left and right. I, it, it's going to be bad for my students, you know, because my students will be going there to the arenas and they're going to be facing that. So uh, I always keep my mind open for that kind of thing. And also one of the main things, and I think that uh, that's what's uh, uh, the reason why Hanzo is also up to date and, uh, and actually Master Kalinhos is because Master Kalinhos always taught us a complete system of jiu-jitsu, Elio. And you are from the same lineage as well. That's why you and Amal have a great jiu-jitsu too, because you come from the same lineage. Yeah, I've just We're not been lucky. Those yeah. two schools that teach just one thing. Yeah. We teach everything. I have students that do it all. Of course, I have my the things that I prefer more, and most of my students are really, really good on that. But my students can pass the guard. My students can do takedowns. My students are good on top, on bottom. My students have good defense. I have students su- super successful in, in, in Gi, of course, I don't need to say that. Since 1998, we have world champions. But I have students that are from my lineage. ADCC world champions, ADCC absolute world champions. Uh, we have students that uh, did great careers on the UFC, you know, such as uh, Rafael Natal Sapo. We had uh, Juliana Jutai Lima. I have a kid from, from, from Texas here, Robert Sanchez. He was like one of the lighter divisions, the 125. And all those those people, they, they come directly from my gym. They didn't train anywhere else. They learn everything they know from white to black with us. This is this and, is one of my big things, like when I when I really look at like the greats, who who's who's great because because you see them in every arena. You see them in you exactly. see them you see them coaching in the gi. You see them coaching in the no gi. You know, with, exactly. with you see them you see them in the UFC. You know, they, and it's this yeah. true holistic uh, martial artist, right? It's this true holistic yeah. sense of what of what jujitsu really is. You can take that look like, you know, like and, and look now MMA has become much different where like you have these phenomenal athletes, right? Exactly. Like these these like you, you need to have an MMA champion. You need you need a top tier one percent athlete now. It's not exactly. just the hard worker anymore. You know, but when, 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 when you like, just if, if people would pay attention, right, if people would pay mm-hmm. attention, they would see there's only a couple guys that are coaching at the world championships that are coaching at ADCC and that are coaching in the UFC. There's not a lot. There's like, it's under 10. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I really believe so. And, uh, and, uh, Elliot, uh, I'll tell you more, uh, for example, in MMA, uh, most of my guys, the ones that I train, I actually next week I have uh, the biggest event in Texas. I have a kid that's fighting for the title, and I, I have another uh, three kids. So I have a team here in Texas that's pretty strong. Uh, man, uh, honestly, I'm being the head coach. I'm not trying to say this about being brag. I'm not especially striking. I'm not especially in wrestling. I am. Um, I did like a couple of professional MMA fights only. You know, and uh, but I think the deep knowledge that I have in jujitsu allows me to kind of have a big picture vision of everything. You've been in a you lot know? of so, battles. Uh, You've been in a lot of battles, exactly. Jacqueline. A lot of a lot of like uh, uh, experience and a lot of uh, 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 not experience just to see to watch, but I felt on my skin too. You know, I mean, I've been there when people said. Professor, I don't want to get knocked out. To say, hey, look, it's not the end of the world. I've been knocked out before in professional MMA. Yeah. I submitted before in professional MMA. I got hurt and had like already seven uh, 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 surgeons, uh, surgeries because of injury because I trained wrong and I did this, this, and that. So me having put my skin on the fire, gi, no gi, uh, MMA, uh, uh, as a fighter, as a coach, as a, as a, a, a sparring partner, all that I think gives me gave me like a lot of uh, uh, baggage, you know. Gave me a lot of experience to make feel people feel that they feel uh, uh, confident on me. They 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 trust me. It's not somebody that is just saying out loud. It's kind of like we say that the guy who who's a swimming <laughs> a swimming uh, a coach and never put himself on the water. You yeah. know, I mean, I think that also <laughs> makes a difference. And look at Hanzo too, man. Hanzo. <laughs> 
Manzo, Manzo we, did everything. Manzo does, did we don't have to, he's still doing everything right, like he fought last <laughs> <The> year. <laughs> you know, you know, and, and, and that gives like a like a such a a, a a a a blessing to the fighters that are under him and actually under experienced people to have that kind of knowledge, like uh, at any time of the day and night. You know, so uh, I think a lot of the success comes also from from the past struggles, from the experiences and all that. So it well, definitely pays off. We'll jump into it now because you led into it a little bit. So, but you helped change. Huh? You helped change my team, you know, and the team that I have out here in Colorado, the MMA team, because I saw you, mm-hmm. in, uh, and I don't remember where we were, but I saw you, and we were, you know, I think it was at the Worlds, at Elliot. I remember yes, that. Yes, it was, was at, at the Worlds. Yes, 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 it was at the Worlds. You're a hundred percent correct. And we were at the time with Muscle Farm, and they were paying me, right? And they and they had set up a deal where they paid all the coaches, and. Man, it was just such bullshit, and that's what you were talking about. And uh, I got, uh, I you know my my f- and and I'm not saying it didn't have as good have a, have its good parts, you know. But my yeah. friend who was acting as the head coach, and I'm I'm nothing against him, you know. Like it went where it went, uh-huh. um, and who was was still one of my very best friends. Um, he he retired from coaching, and and I became the head coach of the team. And I mm-hmm. just was like, man, like it was right after you talked to you were talking to us, and you weren't specifically talking to me, but maybe you were. I don't know. Um, and I was like, <laughs> man, this is some bullshit. What we're doing, like I need, yeah, I yeah. need this, I need this team to come back to a martial arts school, not, uh, yes. not, not a, a supplement Fight company for. facility. Yes, because then I can instill, we can start to instill as a coaching staff all of the things that we know are the best for the athlete community you know um true true martial arts vibe and man you changed the whole like that talk changed the whole direction of what we're of what uh what we're doing and i don't like to say that i'm the head coach because like we all we all coach but yeah you know i i'm the one i feel like sometimes who's like all right here we go let's push in this direction a little bit you know so yeah so you are the head coach. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm the head coach. You know, I'm not out there telling yeah. everyone what to do. Yes, but, of course. Of but, course, I'm, but of you course. know, like the nudges, right? Like the yes. nudges, how we nudge people. And you, re- and, and, and you really set that off for me. And I'll never, you know, and, and I, I, I saw you at, another, at a UFC down the road, and I, and I, and I thanked you for it. I because, remember that. You know, it you, was you really came, important. You came and say, hey, Professor, I really want to thank you. It was a great talk. It made all the difference. I remember that, and I and I told you from the heart, Elliot. You yeah. know, I, I really told you what I really think and I really believe. You know, and uh, and I look at you now. I mean, it worked. It, yeah, my, you know, it worked, <laughs> and I'm I'm making better people. Is the thing I know. I'm helping yeah. create That's better the most people. Important That's thing, the, man. yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah, I, and and look, are we gonna get? I mean, are you gonna get a champion? You just never know. Right. You just yeah, never exactly. know in MMA. It's going to, it, you know, but like, am I making someone who's a champion in life? And, and we were we were steering away from that. like I was doing all of that at the jiu-jitsu school. But with the MMA, we were steering away from that. And you yeah. steer, and you steered me back. <laughs> That's great, you know, man. I'm ste- glad you, steer, you steered, you know, back. man, honestly, Elliot, I'll tell you with with uh, with the bottom of my heart here. I'm not exaggerating. Not even one bit. Making champions is great. It's good. It, it, it's good for the school. It's good for yourself. It's good for the for the sports history and all that. But what really turns me on nowadays in regards to that is to change people's lives from the best. Seriously, like to get somebody that comes to your hand completely depressed, out of shape, on drugs, full of of, of emotional problems, completely socially oppressed. And you make this person a person who has confidence, a person who's proud of them, uh, him or herself, a person who actually got fitter, got healthier. Man, this is the best thing in the world because you literally save lives through martial arts. You do. I know for a fact that some of the people that came to my hand, that God put on my hand, probably would, would be dead nowadays, maybe commit suicide or be completely dig into drugs and, and and all that stuff. Man, this is the best thing in the world when you know for a fact that you made a difference. Even without really wanting it or to brag about it, but it's true, man, because I, 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 you are in deserve first and foremost to help people, to service people. You know, and being champions and all that and do all the other stuff is just 
comes with the package. If it's gonna come, it's gonna come. If it's not gonna come, no problem. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> you know? John Jones was gonna be a champion regardless of what gym he walked into. You oh, know? I believe so. Yeah, so like like sure, did do do coaches add for a hundred percent coaches add, you know, but you know, so yeah. What what do you do with with the with the guy who's suffering, <laughs> you know, the guy who can barely yeah. get out of bed and who can't take care of his kids, what you know, and and man and 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 the mom who just has nowhere nowhere to go, like yeah, that's that's what we're doing. We're changing we're changing the world through martial arts. Exactly, man, and uh, in a healthy way, right? In yeah, a you, good way. You show me positive. one thing wrong with jujitsu, and and man, I'll call you crazy. <laughs> you yeah, know, me, like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, you know? Um, so, uh, back to like the state of jujitsu, you mentioned it earlier, like you all, all homegrown people for you, you know, what, what mm -hmm. is this thing that's going on where, where, where guys are getting bought, right? Like guy, like, oh, yeah. what the, what the <laughs> hell is this? You know, you know, it's funny, Elliot, there's not even one single day for the last six months that I don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I have and I have a very strong opinion, but at the same time, I try to be really like I with my feet on the ground yeah. to understand about that, you know? Look, what I think is that uh, if you have a really good, deep knowledge of jiu-jitsu, you know, and if you provide an environment that people can succeed, that they can be champions, Within your environment, within our school, within your school, I think that it's absolutely the best case scenario. There's no need for a champion or a potential champion to leave your school if you can provide all that. You know, and and uh, and you're asking me about how can I do it and still do it like all these generations. Uh, is that not because I have special technique? I think I have a really good overall technique and understanding about uh, martial arts and jujitsu. But I think more important than that is the environment. You have to create an environment that uh, makes possible to create champions and more importantly, to change people's life from the best. And uh, thank God it's working so far. If you have that, I don't think there's any reason that a, a student or, 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 a, or an athlete or a champion to leave your gym. However, I can understand when people leave their gyms or they leave uh, their teachers, their professors, because they, they don't get that. They don't get an environment that will allow them to be champions. Or they don't get the support to be champions. I, I get it. I understand. And there's a, there's a very common reality, too. I mean, there are schools that are not focused whatsoever in having not even a small competition team. They don't care about that. I don't think it's the main thing about the school to have a competition team. And I think... Every school should try to help to have it has one. its place. It has its place. Exactly. You know, it is. That. It helps. It, keep, that. it helps keep keeps us as the instructors on the cutting edge. You know, yes. you, you have it, exactly. it forces you to uh, exactly. it forces us to not get old. You know, I, I, I agree 100 like percent for me. They when make you, you better. they make you better. You yeah. Know, instructor, better, everything. Yeah. So I, I totally I totally agree with that. So I understand that people some people think about uh, other venues, other uh, opportunities, other schools to go to be able to make their dreams come true. I get it, I totally understand. I'm really blessed that my, my people don't need to leave our, our gyms because our gyms, are, it's already proved they can make you a champion. But still, I understand the other way, the other way around. So I, so I don't judge sorry. these guys that go. Yeah. I don't judge these guys that go. I judge though, I judge 100%. Excuse me, my French, the motherfuckers who go and stay like little flies close to the podium on the basic belts, on the blues, on the purples, the browns. They look at the podium. As soon as they see a champion or a, a person who did good on the podium, they go there and then solicit the kid. This is bullshit. Yes. This is no, not ethical. This is wrong. Yes. Because, number one, Besides the, act, the ethical part of this, the ethics on, uh, involved on this, this is also shows that they don't have what it takes to make a champion because they want to get a ready champion. Elliot, like you said, John Jones can train in any gym in this whole world and be a champion. He's just a freak. He's just a natural athlete. He, he was born to do that. 
He's probably the the, the, the most gifted athlete in MMA history. I I agree with this one hundred percent. Okay, but but for people to come to a guy like that and solicit a guy like that behind somebody that made them a champion, that gave them the tools to be a champion, and solicit them to go offering them uh, some 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 financial advantage, and sometimes it's not even financial advantage; it's just bullshit talk. It's just promises that that uh, are, are totally uh, are based upon results. And then those kids actually leave their masters, leave the school that made them who they are. This is to- totally bullshit for me. This is total bullshit for me. I think this is like completely unethical. I think that people should not solicit. They should accept maybe somebody that go after them, analyze who he is and their realities and, and be ethical to talk to the former professor and explain the situation. That's the right way to go. But man, getting good people, Elliot, tough people, champions, ready champions, and make them better is the easiest thing in the world, man. Fuck. <laughs> you know, think yeah. about it. To get like a guy from like Jacare, you know, and make him better is the easiest thing in the world because he's already a champion. He's super tough. He's, he was born to do that. But I want to see who's going to get a white belt that doesn't do nothing. Teach them the first Upa escape. Teach him how to move the hip until making them a champion in jiu-jitsu or the UFC. That's the real coach. That's the hard work. That's the one that deserves credit. Because it was the whole journey, the whole thing. They provided good technique. They provided good mindset. They provided good environment. They provided inspiration. Everything you can imagine. Man, I, I, I laugh when I get somebody that, that gets a, a, a kid. A very tough and champion kid already. Three months later, they claimed it as their students. Oh, my student won the world championships. Come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. I'm sorry about my friend. <laughs> no, it's okay. You can say whatever you want. This, <laughs> this is totally BS. It's, it's ridiculous. You know? yes. and, and I don't know why they try to make promotion out of that because this doesn't say nothing about them being a good coach or about them being a good school. It doesn't prove anything. It just proves that they have some money. They offer a champion already. Some incentive that's most of the times are like small incentive. And then they go and uh, it's kind of like a uh, people who, you know, jerk off, with, jerk off with other people's dicks. Yeah. That's what I think. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 it's such, it's yeah. such a double edged sword, right? Because part of, part of the problem, as you said earlier, is on the original instructive. But, and I can only say from my experience. So, yeah. um, I know when when I was coming up, when I was still, uh, you know, purple, brown, you know, and, and and in my early MMA days, man, for me, Amal was like, look, go, like, yeah. go, yeah. go to Henzo's, go to J- go, yeah. go, go get training. And he was never scared that I was like, or I never felt like he was scared, like I was going to like leave him. But but that uh-huh. made me love him more that you know, exactly. like. Like I, so I don't okay. like, like, it's like your kid, like how, like I see you, your kids are graduating, right? What, 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 exactly. are, you, what are you going to do? Keep your kid locked in your basement? Jack and Lino. Exactly. Like, no, exactly. you let them yeah, go out exactly. and see the world. And, 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 and if you did your job correctly, they'll always come home on Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, yeah. uh-huh. they'll, they'll always oh, come yeah. home and call you on your birthday because, because yeah. you're their dad. Yeah. You know, exactly. So like, but the thing is that, excuse me to interrupt you before yeah. I forget about that, but the thing is that this kind of situation is a situation, is a normal situation in life, and it's amazing. But the problem is that those guys that are soliciting those kids, they're making them live in really bad terms with their former professors yeah. and the p- people who made them who they are. So that's, that's the, that's the other bad now. side of it, right? So that's the other difficult side that yeah. I was getting to, right? Is, is and they, they don't care, man. Yeah. They don't care. They literally don't care. They're, I don't know if you saw, like, if you noticed. I mean, I, I know you understand Portuguese a little bit. Yeah. But did you notice uh, the crowds chanting on the last day of the yes, world? Yes, it was, a, it was really cool. Thing and, you know? Yeah. It, 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 it made me think, man. It really made me think. And uh, some part of the crowds are just, like, getting money, uh, getting, like, $100 bills and kind of waving, like, like uh, trying to make fun of the other people. But at the same time, kind of, like, accepting that yeah we pay we have the champions because we pay we don't make them but screw it we still won 
man, there's a ways to win. There's ways to win. Come on. You know? Yeah, so, it, it, you know, you look look back five, look back ten years, and, and there's a couple teams that are still winning and have been winning the whole time. So yeah, you know, yes, like, exactly. but before the days of paying, you know, before the days mm-hmm. of paying. Um, so it's yeah. it's just an interesting time, you know what? Uh, it's and, yeah. and we'll I I think it's kind of just an interesting time in the world. We don't, in my opinion, we don't know how to deal with the internet yet. You know, I I agree a hundred percent. Like we it don't know how to handle world. this thing. You know. Mm-hmm. I where, agree 100%. Where, like, you know, these people can, like, watch these kids on the internet and be like, okay, I'm going to go to that tournament because he's probably going to win. Then I'm going to solicit him and yada, yada, you know? Yeah. And, and, yep. and then, like, the the young kids don't know how to handle their fame either, you know? Getting True. on the internet, True. talking shit, you know? And, um, yeah. Yeah, I just, so, I don't understand. So many it. of them, right? So many, huh, Elliot? Yeah, I just there don't so understand. So many internet. Uh, uh, celebrities nowadays that are worrying more about being celebrities than being better martial artists or better fighters. This is being crazy. Yeah, man. This is getting your control. fame. Your fame is going to end. Like someone's going to oh, come yeah. around to beat you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like all of us. This, like I don't care who you are. Like if John Jones stays in the game long enough, he's going to get his ass kicked by the oh, next sure. John Jones. You know, for sure. And if for if, sure. When you're a piece of shit on the way up, people, yeah. people are going to shit on you and forget about you on the way down. We saw this happening. I'm not going to say names in the history of jiu-jitsu. Yeah. But you saw a lot of greats that simply evaporated. Evaporate. Yeah. They evaporate. They, they're gone. Because and like amazing. They were amazing. Yeah. In jiu-jitsu. Great fighters. Great athletes. But because of all this other part, like not caring, oh, I'm the champion, screw you, I'm better than you, I don't care, I say whatever I want, disrespecting everybody. Once they're not the champions anymore, they're gone. It's, yeah. You know? It's great and when people you're the best. Have... Exactly. It's great when you're the it's best. Time, you know? It's great when you're the best. But on the way down, it's, it's it, uh, yeah, it, it's, not, it's not that pretty. You know, it's no, it's not it's that not, pretty. It's not and they're all pretty. gonna suffer that. And they're gonna be standing and watching. I don't wish anybody's bad, bad no. anything bad to anybody, but I do know I'm long enough on this game to see, to know that it's gonna happen with A, B, C, D, E. Oh, you know That's it. For sure. It's for sure it's gonna happen. The, because the you know? it's like you said, they're and not changing anybody's life. No, they just think about themselves. They don't care about anything. They only live the moment. They had zero, like a conception of what's going to happen in, in, in the near future. They just, oh, I'm the champion now. I can kick everybody's ass, and I make a lot of money. Screw you. You're like below me. I'm better than you. You're nothing. And guess what? This same guy will be on the top spot one day when a new kid has more money, is better than him. You tell them, say, hey, how about now? You are the one. You are the scum. You are nobody. I'm the champion. I can kick your ass with one hand. How about that? And that's coming for all of us. All like, of us. Yeah, exactly. all, all of us. Like these, like the, the 18-year-old in your school right now, when you know, that yeah. walks in in, five, in in six years, when he's a monster purple belt and you're 54, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like, right. Like, so what, what, what did you do for his life? And that's, that's where the thing changes. And that, and you said it earlier, right? Like, look, these techniques are always going to change. They're always good. They're going to keep getting better. You know, yeah. they're going to keep getting better because it's, it's, that's what, that's what happens through time and evolution and of a game, right? Exactly. Like things, things improve. So how, how you change their life, man, like, and so, and I always say this to my students, like, look guys, these moves don't really matter. Like in the grand scheme of things, what, how do you transfer what you learn here on this mat to make you a better husband, a better, a better wife, a better father, a better, a better boss, all of that stuff. This is, this is where like the true nitty gritty of what jujitsu is doing. And if all you're doing is putting out amazing technique you know, if if that's the only way, when 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 the the, the technique changes, the technique changes, and you fall off, everything else is going to fall off for you too. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Honestly, Elliot, I think 
the techniques and being a good, a decent fighter during my career was one of the things that, 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 that mattered least for me. Because being in jiu-jitsu all this time and being with my team all this time and between my friends, they gave me so many way better things than, than just that. Man, they gave me the best friends I had in my life. They gave me health. They gave me confidence. They gave me peace of mind. They gave me great role models. They gave me great uh, uh, scumbags that I saw, backstabbers that I saw and had to deal with, and uh, it made me a better person, made me a smarter person. Jiu-Jitsu gave me, even like uh, the circles of Jiu-Jitsu made me know my wife and I have my kids because of that. So Jiu-Jitsu gave me way, way more important things than the technical part of it. Jiu-Jitsu is just the way, man. It's just and, the, uh, it's the and, road, and, uh, right? It's it, the road we walk. Yes. You know, exactly. It's, it's, the, the, road road, we, it's exactly. the road we walk. It's not, it's not like, you know, it's, it's, it's our path. Like, yeah, for me, uh, like for my kids, uh, and they don't get it yet, you know, but it's, it's okay. Like rule number one is they have to do jujitsu, you know, like it's yeah. the most important yeah. thing in my house and it's not right. It's, I mean like, yeah, sure. Part of it is bullies and all that stuff. They're like that. Yeah. That's the easy part of it. But if you, if you could find something that creates a better human being, in my opinion, than jujitsu, then like if they could convince me of that, then they could do that other thing. But until they do, oh, yeah. until, until they <laughs> show me a better way to walk through life, then, you know, while they're in my house, yeah. you know, they're doing jujitsu. And they will thank you after, man. One day they'll thank you. Trust yeah. me. One day. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my mom said to me. She said, someday your boys are going to grow up and thank you. And I was like, yeah, yeah maybe, well. maybe if I'm lucky, mom, <laughs> you know, so maybe, maybe <laughs> if, I, if I do a good job, you know, um, uh, but you're you're sure now to. in Houston, right? Yes, I am in a in a in a city called Webster, and it's a suburb of Houston on the south part of of, uh, of the city of Houston. It's actually my gym is actually on the same uh, on the same street as the Space Center, the NASA Space Center. Oh, that's cool. So my school is yeah, my school is like literally five minutes from NASA. So so you've done this. You've, cool. you've done it again, right? Like you've so like you've like in two way different cultures, right? Like Brazilian yeah. culture and American culture are not the same, right? No, not at all. Not, not, not even close. All. Right. So, no. I mean, I mean, it's another amazing thing that, 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 that like, uh, like when I'm all put it in my head, I was like, man, I have to talk to you because like you, you created this amazing thing in Brazil, you know, mm -hmm. and, and now you've created this amazing thing in America in Texas, like, and is it all just the same thing? Is it all just the culture of the school for you? Man, uh, like you said, there are, there are cultural differences. That is actually also evolution. You get better with the time. You learn with your mistakes. And uh, you get more professional. You get more knowledgeable. But at the end of the day, Elliot, I maintain the same essence. I would never change my core and my essence on what I do. I will not completely change and do something that I really don't believe in. If somebody told me, say, hey, Draculino, change completely your system. Uh, start teaching like this, this, and that, because you make probably three times more money. But I will never do that. Because if I don't believe, if I had to change my soul and my core and my essence to make more money, man, I will feel like a prostitute. You know what I mean? So I, do I have success financially? Yeah, I have some good success financially, thank God. But I never sacrifice my values and what I believe in. I never did that. So there are a lot of similarities between my work in Brazil and the work here, pretty much on the core. The adaptions are minor adaptions for cultures and also because of evolution, like I said. You know, because you get wiser, you get smarter, you learn things with the time. But the core is the core, brother. And if I, God takes me to, I don't know, maybe, oh, you're going to be teaching in Abu Dhabi three years, let's suppose. I will do the same. Of course, I have to adapt to their culture a little bit too because it's actually more different than Brazilian and, and, uh, and American. But uh, sure. I, will not, I will not change my core and my assets. And if people are not happy with that, just kick me out because I won't change. We uh we did it with our schools that you what you're talking about. It's called uh defining core values. And like the definition mm -hmm. of a core value is something that you'll lose friends and money over. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. When, when you look exactly. at it like, man, that just exactly. vi- violates who I am. Exactly. Yeah. And that never works, man. That never works. No. That's good. I learned a new, a new, a new expression, the core values. Yeah. Core so the core values. values are pretty much the essence of the thing. Yes. Right? Right. Okay. And, and it's very simple. Like you'll just lose friends and money over it, right? Specifically money, right? Because that's where most yeah. people move. They're like, like, oh shit. Like what, what you just said. Oh man, if I just do this thing. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go make a. I'll, I'll make. I'll make a little more money. Well, when do you not move? When do you not? When do you not change the? Like you know, move the dial a little bit. And the next thing you know, it's not this one big step that that made you a terrible person or a terrible business, right? It's all these little changes that you're willing to violate your core values for, and then you're 180 degrees from where you started. You know exactly. That's so, man. You you nailed it. That's exactly it. And I think that, unfortunately, there are a lot of people that have zero worries or zero regrets to step into their core beliefs and their core values to have some advantage, some quick advantage out of that. That's the the sad truth. Well, it's because and, uh, it's right in front of you, you know? It's right yeah. in front of you. Like, you, you see this opportunity, you know? Um, and for me, I, I know what I like. I know what what has really helped me is is uh, I don't. I try not to make any decisions based on money. You know, like uh, exactly. Like I exactly. try. Like I uh, I wrote a book recently, and um, oh cool. Yeah, it's called it's called the Gospel of Fire. So it's the same as the podcast. And so so uh, can you get an Amazon or what? Yeah, Amazon. Yeah. I'll just send you a copy. You don't have to get it. <laughs> I'll mail you a oh, copy. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, you, I'll t- text me your address and I'll mail you a copy. Um, it's thank a, you. Bro. You know, it's about like my personal struggle with anxiety and you know, and and like really, really like life crippling anxiety. Um, and when I was writing this book. Like I had to pay to write the book. You know, I was I I call it a company because I can't really write. And they, they said like, you know, the, the price tag was, was $25,000 and I was like, fuck, you know? And I was like, (laughs) man, I was like, man, what's the ROI? Like how the hell do I make $25,000 back? You know? And then I, I just changed my tune a little bit of like what, what an ROI would look like. I just, I just said like, what if I write this book and what Mm. if somebody that I don't know contacts me and says, fuck man. That book changed my life. Like knowing that that you that you suffer too. Like in fuck and you you fought yeah. in the UFC and all this stuff. That, you know, like that you suffer too. Like it, it changed my life. And and like like for me, like that's what did it. That's when I said yes. Oh yeah. You know, because like Man. what what what's a life worth? Man, that's what matters, Elliot. Yeah, what's that's a life what really worth? That's what matters at the end of the day, man. Yeah. Like like we spoke a little bit earlier. Yeah. That's what matters. You know, to have like somebody to say that to you or even when they never say it, but you know it, but you know it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't need to, yeah. I don't, I don't need a lot. I don't need the praise. It's okay. But when you know it, when exactly. you're like, God damn, that's right. That's, that's what we're doing, you know? Exactly. And, and when you can move off of the money of things and be like, okay, did I move the needle of the world in a positive direction or a negative direction when that's mm-hmm. when that becomes your decision maker you know and look i'm lucky enough like like you said you know i've been i've been i've been blessed you know and and i'm i'm lucky enough to be able to afford the $25,000 to to write the book you know like through yes. through, a, through yes. who knows what so so yes and i understand that that is not everyone's situation so i'm not saying go out and waste $25,000 yeah. if you don't have yeah. $25,000 but i was able to do it and for me, it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life, you know, like, like really yeah. like digging in because like the lady who was my, my ghostwriter that I was talking to, she really mm-hmm. made me like clear my thoughts up really, really well. You know? Oh, so, so pretty much you, 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 she wrote it or you wrote it so, or she was like an so, editor. Or so she, there's not a single word in that book. That's not my word. Right. Oh. Uh-huh. But but she but okay. it was 70 hours on the phone with her is what it turned out to be, you know, something like that. Wow. And we wow. just and like, you know, so we just like went through and went through like, well, first I had an outliner. So I had one lady who was an outliner and we 
we outlined how the book would like the structure of the book. And then after we got done that, it, it went, it moved to the writer, you know, who was another lady. And she just like, I mean, dude, it was, it was intense. It was intense. Like sometimes I'd get wow. off the phone and I'd be crying because like I would, I would, I had to go back to like some of the worst, like, you know, and it was recent. It was only like five years ago, four years ago, some really wow. dark times for me, you know, of like, of, of anxiety. So and she was like, can you tell me a little more, please? And I'm like, oh, my fucking God. You know, like, yeah. oh, this is. Sometimes this. there are things that are hiding. Yeah. Inside. And it was. You have to you have, take it out. You have to get it out. And she like, and it helped get it out. And now I just am like, really, really like, not that I wasn't sure before, but like this, like that process made me even more sure uh, of my values. It made it like reinforced, you know. And like it, it really, it really changed my life, you know. So it was. It how was, how long did it take the whole process to do it? Uh, about and, ten months. Okay. It took ten months yeah. from like, from like start to finish. Yeah. Uh, and it's not bad though. It was no, fast then. It was fast, and they and they do everything. So they publish, they do everything, and now like you know like they like. They'll they'll keep as long if people keep buying the books and I was I was super lucky like I hit Amazon bestseller so it was wow. it was yeah it was an amazing experience like and and you know like I I get Good. to I get to meet a lot of people you know and a lot of people have talked to me about about um about the book so it, it's been you know it's it's been really great awesome man that's great I'm happy for you and it's all jujitsu Draculino it's all jujitsu there's not <laughs> like I can't get away from jujitsu. You know, uh, jujitsu is a replication of life, bro. Yeah, I, I can't get away from it. Like if I if I if I didn't do jujitsu, I don't know that I would like I just know how to be mounted. You know, I just know how to how to have like the, the somebody's hands around your neck. And it's because, yeah. you know, it's because of like, you know, just like you said earlier, it's it's the lineage that we that I got lucky enough to come from. You know, exactly. Where the, where the yeah. first thing we're that best. I yeah, where the first thing I learned wasn't the 50 50. You know, oh, not at all. Not <laughs> you know, at all. where the first thing I learned how to do was it was a bridge, was an UPA yeah, escape. Yeah. I, I, so that? the jujitsu we learn allow us to be able to explore anything we want because yeah. we have like a solid foundation. Yeah, when you yeah so. when, when you don't have to worry about getting like when when your defense is solid, you can do all the offense in the world. You know, when, oh, when, yeah. when your defense is terrible, you'll just sit there with your guard closed and never open it because you're like, well, I'm going to go for the arm bar and then, and then I'm, and then I'm, then I'm going to fuck that up and then I'm going to get mounted. And then when I get mounted, I mean, I don't know how to get out of the mount, you know, but that's just life. You know, when you can handle, when you can handle your own bullshit, when you can handle your shit, like you can go out there and fail all day long. Like that's all I do is mm -hmm. fail. Ah, I fuck that up. Ah, I fuck that up. Do that different next time. <laughs> right. That's all we do. You know, for me, yeah. that's all I oh, do every well. day. You know, yep. <laughs> is, is I just go how to fail. I fail a little better every day. Yeah, that's it, man. That's that. I like that. You have a lot of good quotes. Yeah. A true writer. Brother. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I read a lot. I write a lot, you know, and I like like you said, I'm not like, I, I love making champions. Like like I just I was with my my good group that I have right before we got on the phone here. But mm -hmm. that's not but like what I love the most is like my seven o'clock class. You know, my six yeah. and my seven o'clock class tonight, I jump on the mat and like, man, it's like, uh, I have everyone, right? You know, I, ha I, ha everyone, I have ladies, man. I have men, I have yeah. old, older guys, younger guys, the champions are in the class, you know, and, yeah. and we yeah. all, we all do this thing together. Yeah. That's amazing, man. We're blessed. Yeah. We, we work with, with our foot on the mats. Yeah. Wearing very comfortable pajamas. <laughs> yeah. And I do what I want every day. You know, do I do what I want day. every day. Change people's lives for the best, man. We're blessed. We are, and it's you know, and, and what it comes down to is is the people that, like, for for me, for people people like you and people like Henzo that like continue the lineage of of what it was to do jujitsu. You know. Wow, cool, man. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank amazing. You. you know, like I know you weren't my teacher, but I was always looking at you. You know, like, and I know, you know, <laughs> I was because you were you were put in front of me at a very young age, right? Like, like at a very impressionable age, and and like the, the yeah. like you, you so you like uh, you're you're like you Seneca was put in front of me at that time. You know, Hanzo <laughs> was put in front of me, Gordo, and like Gordo. so for yeah. some reason, like those are the people that like you you four or five. Outside of obviously Amal, he was like, you know, who's yeah, my, who's my Amal, dad? Amal was there, man. Amal is one of the first OGs Americans to come to the motherland, struggle, yeah. 
uh, and learn their language and and, and, <laughs> and be tough times. And I uh, look at him now. Yeah. Look at Albert too. Albert was right after him. Same thing. You know, yeah. I have a lot of respect for 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 this guy. It's a lot. Of, besides being friends, I really always told them that I respect a lot what they do. It's not easy, man. It's not easy. No, yeah. no, that that was not an easy thing to do. But, you know, not at that all. Was not an easy thing. So, all right, Jack, you know, I really appreciate you coming on and talking about, about your life and, and, and like how you and, and jujitsu and, and everything that we discussed. So, man, thank you very much. My pleasure, brother. It was, a, it was an honor, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text you. I want you to send me your address. I'll text you when we hang up so uh, that I can send you. Okay. I'll, I'll send you a book. Sounds great, man. Can't all right. wait. All right, appreciate Jack, it, Elliot. Thank you, thank you thank so you. much, brother. All right, Master. All right. All right, guys, thanks for listening to this episode of The Gospel Fire. Don't forget to check me out on all of my social media at FireMarshall205. Again, at FireMarshall205. Go to my YouTube channel, um, FireMarshall01, that is, for YouTube, where you can follow. I'm, I'm making these videos 100K strong. That's the goal for the year. I want 100,000 strong listeners to The Gospel of Fire. So I'm making, trying to make a video a week so that you guys can follow along on my journey of, of how I go about my day, some things that I talk about, some things that I try to work on for myself. And then finally, don't forget my website, elliotmarshall.com, where you can get up to date with everything that has to do with me personally, The Gospel of Fire. You're going to find all about my book release, um, also called The Gospel of Fire, February 12th. It will be for sale on Amazon that whole week for 99 cents. So all that information at elliotmarshall.com. Thanks again for listening. Thanks to my sponsors, Evo Labs and Onnit. So uh, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode.